Welcome to Scorched Earth and a general reading for the sign of Libra, Sun, Moon or Ascendant for the month of July 2023. I hope you will. I'm using the uh, Tarot of the Abyss for you today. Um, before we begin, if the reading resonates and you'd like to go a little bit deeper, there will be an extended that you can access at the end. That is the first link in the description box. And the second link in the description box is to my private community, the Order of the Phoenix, over on Circle. It's full of uh, chock full of really astounding people. Um, I'm getting some classes up and running over there. So if that sounds like something you would be interested in, please do feel free to avail yourself of that second link. Right, Libra, seems like an age since I've spoken to you. Let's have a look and see what's going on with you. I have three cards for Libra, please. Ooh, well, we have the devil in reverse showing up in your recent past. Let's flip this around so you can see what I'm looking at. We're at current energy for Libra, please. Good Lord. Almost put my candle out there. Huh? Let's have a look. We have the Seven of Swords in reverse. Okay. And what about current energy, please? Well, no, not current energy. It's coming towards you. Four of Cups. Right. <clears throat> we have the Two of Cups at the bottom of the deck. So really no surprise that we're looking at relationships. I mean, I do feel like there's been somewhat of a of an emphasis on that for you recently, and I'm not sure why that would be, but... Uh, it's just how we roll, isn't it? So, that's the main cards. Let's get some clarifiers out. Yeah, easy. Let's pull you out. I've just pulled the deck up and we've got the two of cups at the bottom of that deck too. So that in. Tell me why the devil is here for Libra, please. Three of Swords. And the Eight of Pentacles. Tell me about the Seven of Swords, please. Why is the Seven of Swords here for Libra? Thank you. We've got the Star. Ooh. We have the Hierophant and we have the Seven of Pentacles. And what about the Four of Cups, please? Four of Cups again, this time in the reverse. I actually like that. And the Temperance card, indeed. Oh, I've actually got goosebumps coming up now. I like this because of the feeling that I get that it is a choice for you. I'll put it as simply as that. We might get another deck out and, uh, and pull some more cards. We put those where we can see them. Um, got the nine of wands at the bottom of the deck here. And it's almost like the four of cups is actually a mirror of itself here. And I actually want to put the temperance card there. So make of that what you will. But let's get started. So apologies, I love out the light, but it's the best I can do. We start off with the devil in reverse. The devil is called a Capricorn in the major arcana, but it does refer to... Um, <clears throat> ways in which we feel stuck quite often and that's generally because we're coming from a place of fear about something right the devil card is uh, usually depicts this devil in the background and we've got two people in the foreground who've got chains around their necks right and it, it looks like quite a restrictive situation but the understanding that we arrive at with the devil is that he has no power of his own so where there is a situation where we feel stuck whether it is through um addiction, codependence, any of these sorts of things, it's generally because it's within our power to remove ourselves from that situation, but we have not yet worked out how to do that. <coughs> In some cases, we may not actually want to do that. Now, the fact that the devil card has shown up in the reverse for you is, is quite striking because it, it seems to be coming to a point of awareness that certain things that you might have held to be absolutely immutable are anything but and it comes down to you it comes to the down to the the decisions that you make your uh, your particular perceptual lens that you've been looking at something and this could be a particular situation it could be a relationship but it also could be reality generally 
without wanting to sound too, um, you know, Leo and Mercury like I am, like sometimes these things are literally as big as that, where you realise that you've been sitting in a kind of little box with the way that you see the world and you see your relationships and you see any particular situation that you're in. And the truth is something somewhat of a sidestep from that. And you can see where a particular kind of mindset or a particular frame of, of, of thought or a particular mental process has been keeping you almost in the dark. I feel like that very, very strong. Because this Three of Swords that's arriving here, it's usually the one card in the tarot that most people don't need explaining to them. Like the, the visual is so strong and it's so familiar to anybody who's probably over the age of 16, I would think. Generally, our first experience of that happens at some point in our teens. <coughs> It's the card of a broken heart. It's the card of, of emotional pain. But, as I'm always saying with this card, it used to fox me as to why it would be a swords card rather than a cups card, because as we know, the cups are the vessels that hold the water, and water in the tarot is the symbolism of the emotion. So why on earth would it be swords? Would it be air? And I, can came, I came to the conclusion that it was the point at which the truth hits our hearts, right? Mind and heart connect, and there is a realization that there was not before. And in light of that, everything changes. Like nothing can be quite as it was before. So whatever the thing is, it could have happened years ago, but our awareness of it is happening in the here and now, or in the recent past, at least for you. Um, <coughs> and as such, it changes us. I mean, everything shifts and we can't see things the way that they were before. I mean, three swords can encapsulate all sorts of feelings, but ultimately it is that one of... There's something destabilising about it. Now, what I actually like is the fact that the devil is in reverse here, followed by the three of swords, because it feels like there's somewhat of a processing. I can't remember what we talked about exactly last month, but I feel like it... I feel like it was kind of wandering around the point of needing to pick a side. The Three of Swords may well have picked up, but may have shown up in that reading too. It's this sense that this information has come in and you cannot see the world the same way anymore. Like things have changed, something is different. And that information needs to be assimilated into your reality as, ex it, as it exists right now. And I feel like the devil in reverse is an awesome indication that that is beginning to happen, right? We've got that Eight of Pentacles there, speaking about mastery, right? About work, about the things that we, we have to really apply ourselves to in order to become a master of whatever it is. Now, this is the information that came in and the corresponding uh, spotlight that's been shown on a way that you have been thinking very restrictively about stuff. <clears throat> And then the ability to be able to do something about it, right? You may not be able to change the situation, whatever it has been. And, you know, with this Two of Cups and the Nine of Wands there, I really do feel like it, it's relationship-based for you. It does not have to be your significant other, if you want to put it that way. Your husband, your wife, your spouse. It's two things that mean the same thing. Um, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, that kind of thing. It, it can be family relationships. It can be, uh, you know, a boss perhaps who, you know, you've been working your ass off for, trying to support their company, only to realise that you've been taken advantage of again and again and again. And the reasons why your life is difficult is because you're dedicating so much energy to the improvement of somebody else's circumstances. Right? You have to take it as it resonates to you. Remember that this is a general reading. But it, it's that sense that the light has been shine, shone on something and you can see where you've been stuck. And that might, might well just be a thought process that you'd had, you know, a particular view of real, reality. And now it's beginning to shift. There's something that you can do about it. Might not be that situation, but it can be your response to the situation. And that feels to me to be the most important thing in your recent past. So when we get to where you are right now, your current energy. Well, not only do we have double major arcana there, so there's something really quite big going on, but we've almost got a step back from the Eight of Pentacles to the Seven. 
obviously what we like to do is for for everything to be moving forwards in a very linear you know um, in a very linear way that makes sense to us but there's something of a stepping back here <clears throat> to properly assess the situation and assess the circumstances so the seven of swords is often called the thief card it talks about deception in some ways you know somebody is taking something from you but the way that i read the cards because you are the center of everything because reality exists actually in here it's about the way that you decode it <coughs> what we see from this card is is a revelation in the ways that we have deceived ourselves about things and that often happens at such a subconscious level we have no idea about it until we trip over it somehow right so it can be uh for example going back to the um the example that i used of of relationships being absolutely certain that somebody was doing their best that they were doing the right thing always trying at least to do the right thing seeing the good in someone rather than taking stock of their behavior and what that tells you if you take it out of uh if you take it out from behind the rose tinted glasses that it's been starting i take glasses off and look at it for what it actually is and again it's in the reverse for you so there is not only information that's come in that has liberated you in some way as uncomfortable as it may be but there is also a sense that you are not deceiving yourself anymore about what this actually means in reality and we have the star and the hierophant and the seven of pentacles here now, the star is the card of aquarius hierophant is the card of taurus and in some ways these these two cards are kind of they're almost pulling in slightly different directions because the star is very much focused on the future. It talks about lots of things, um, including connection and vulnerability and uh, healing, ultimately. But it's very forward-facing. The Hierophant exists in the present and there is some aspect of it that is forward-facing because we have this transmission of information you know, from what has been learned to what is being given out again kind of like history, um, you know, heritage and legacy, let's put it that way. Um, but it's almost rooted in the past because the Hierophant covers what has been and always has been and so will continue to be in future. It has us going back and looking at the information that we've been taking as absolute gospel, if you will, and testing the veracity of it. Is it true that this thing that I thought was absolutely certain is the case? Is it true that this is a self-evident truth? And if it is, or whether it isn't, what does that mean about where you go from here moving forwards? What does this mean about the nature of the connections that you will have in the future? What does it mean about your capacity to heal from something? There's a tension here, as in a tension, between the energies of, of these cards. It, it feels a little bit like they're kind of circling each other and going, well, not everything that I know is true, but then not everything that I know is false. So how do I work out the difference? You know, what filters have, have I been using so far that have led me to a particular view? And how much have I been, you know, pushing that back out into the universe by, by you know, the way that I behave or the, the certain value systems that I hold moving forward? Now, I love the Seven of Pentacles, <clears throat> even though it's kind of a slightly depressing card. Um, the, the received wisdom of this card is that this is a harvest that is failing. You can't really see it in the coloration of this deck here. <coughs> but on the original deck, you can see that the uh, the leaves are kind of browning at the edge. And there's this idea that the, the what you have invested is not going to give you the yield that you anticipated at the start. So what we have here is a moment in time where somebody has had this realisation. And the question is... Do I just keep working hard at it? Or is it time to cut my losses? You know, the question of where it is that you actually stand is what is being brought up here. 
and the seven of pentacles can say oh, i'm going either way this way or that way but it has it it has us questioning ourselves because if we just continue the way that we have been there's something of a truth that we're denying in ourselves because we've seen it here and in the spirit of radical honesty it doesn't feel like we can continue the way that we have been so there's some question of where it is that we want to go and a question of the contemplation of of what sort of it's the word that i'm looking for retro engineering we're going to need to do in order to reach that whether that's a point of healing or a goal or an aim you know the, the, the star card is sometimes called the wish card you know what are your highest hopes goals dreams aspirations and are you on a path to being able to achieve them or is there something about your history something about your heritage something about your legacy or is about your past that is stopping you from being able to produce a legacy that is much more in alignment with where you actually want to go it, the energies of this are really quite big i felt like last month i think um, I th i'm kind of assuming here from from what i can remember that the reading last month was kind of specific it, it was extremely specific in terms of uh, a particular relationship or relationships because again it doesn't have to be just one person it could be relationship to society because that's another thing that the hierophant talks about or it can be um you know, you know kind of like the established order of things uh, hierarchical institutions how much are you gelling with what these things actually stand for and in the long term realistically are these going to stop you from achieving what it is that you want to achieve So this month is much bigger. It's, it's almost touching on not only your view of reality, but whatever core structure of values you're working to and your personal philosophy. Because there's something here that is jarring with the truth that you, you perceive. And the question is, what are you going to do about it? to fix it. It could be that it seemed really quite obvious initially. Well, I just need to work harder. I need to put more effort into this thing. I need to invest more. But then we come to the Seven of Pentacles and it's not quite as clear as that. Not now. Not now that you've really given it some thought. And this desire to be authentic in the way that you are dealing with the world generally seems to be more important than anything else now and i like that right all about authenticity and sovereignty and all those kind of things you know when we look at what's coming towards you the interesting way that i felt like i needed to put those cards we have the four of cups and it's kind of really sitting in a reflection of each other so the four of cups for me talks you can talk like all of the cards in the tarot, it's multivalent. It has lots and lots of meanings. We can be talking about a certain level of boredom and apathy. We can be talking about a lack of gratitude. We can be talking about um, rejection. You know, the act of being rejected. Or, you know, when we get a bit deeper down into it, abandonment issues that are triggered. And the, um, the behaviours that stem from anticipation of that right, of your abandonment issues being triggered in some way. And we know Libra is, is about union and harmony and all of those good things that we see in the lover's card, right? But being a Libra doesn't mean that you've come out into the world in a very balanced state. It means that the point of you is to achieve a balanced state, right? When we think about the justice card, which is the card of Libra in the major arcana. It's about achieving that point where, where fairness and doing what is right regardless of <clears throat> whatever it might be that has been keeping you stuck becomes paramount you 
You know, there's an as above, so below thing going on here. Well, maybe it is that you think that you've been doing the right thing for a long time and suddenly you've realised that you're not. I mean, I would say that that was almost certain from what I'm seeing on the table here. Yeah, let's get the John Barrow out here. Because the so below part of this uh, reading here with the Four of Cups in reverse, you know, that is a card that speaks to me about gratitude. It's a card to me that, that, that speaks of a, a lack of a fear of abandonment, of rejection, of those things that pain you. Right? In favour of doing what is right for you, generally, but certainly in terms of your healing. But what allows you to achieve some sort of equilibrium, some sort of balance? Like This is going to be really, really important for you through the month of July. And we've got that nine of wands at the bottom of the deck. Now, that is about personal resilience. It is also about boundaries, too. It speaks to something that is kind of approaching the end, but is not quite there yet. And because what I'm seeing here is a process of assimilation, it's almost like you've received so much information, now you have to make it make sense. And a lot of the making it make sense is down to you and the way that you see things. So, <coughs> as ever... The movement, the adjustment is actually in you rather than someone else. And like I said, it, it, it's looking at these two four of cups and saying, does my inner world, is my, is my outer world reflected in my inner world and vice versa? You know, am I coming at things at a place of equilibrium or is there something that is sitting in the background that is kind of sending everything a little bit wonky? Tell me about this temperance card. Thank you. Well, there we have the Queen of Swords, which is you. That's the card of Libra in the court hierarchy. And we have also the Knight of Wands, which is Sagittarius. And both very quick moving energies. I mean, your cardinal air, Sagittarius, is mutable fire. Um, <clears throat> but they're coming to meet each other. And I think that this is really important because we have the discernment. We have that ability to process like vast amounts of information that is very Libran. Um, but we also have something that is much more action oriented. I, I think what is important is that you don't get stuck in your head this month, Libra. That there has to be some sort of corresponding action with every kind of um, nugget of information that you have processed. The Queen of Swords is... I think all of the Queens are to a degree, actually. I was going to say, like, the, the Queen of Swords it, is interested in the truth. And no matter how brutal the truth may be, that's what drives the Queen of Swords. It's to get down to the facts of the matter. And I think that the facts of the matter for July are that you are getting an insight into how your behaviours have been shaped by a fear of rejection, you know, a, a triggering of abandonment issues some sort of really really close relationship that you've had that isn't quite what you thought it was and the knight of wands is like be very present here pay attention to this oh shit i did say that a lot last month you know like nothing is insignificant last month everything requires scrutiny there were some signs that i told not to scrutinize too much but i feel like you were one of the ones where i was saying like pay attention pay attention to everything because it's important <clears throat> And the Knight of Wands is very much about the present energy of, of seeing what that means in the here and now. Yeah, we've actually got double Sagittarius here with the Temperance card and the Knight of Wands. The idea that you must be present in order to process this is very, very strong. And we can only really be present if we are coming out from underneath, sloughing off, if you will. Um, whatever perception that we've had of things that hasn't been quite right, right? The skin's been getting a little bit tight. There's personal growth here for sure. But it's because you're looking at yourself and going, right, I got this wrong. Or I've been working or I'm laboring under some sort of misapprehension for a while. You can't change other people as much as we would like to be able to. You, you literally can't do that. The only thing that you really have any control over is yourself. And the question of what is going on in the here and now is going to be one that is going to be extremely important for you in the month of July. 
What about this Temperance card? <clears throat> so we've got the Fool in reverse and we've got the Hierophant in reverse. Now, generally we prefer to see the Fool in the upright because that indicates the start of a new cycle. It can indicate trust and faith and, and hope and all of those beautiful, very spiritual things too. Right? And sometimes it can talk about um, actual foolish behaviour, but here it feels to me like it's, it's a loss of innocence and naivety, particularly with a view to self. Now, look, we have the Hierophant appearing in the upright and then in the reverse here. Now, this is very stable. This is actually very fixed and rigid because that's the way that, you know, these society, these society, these structures perpetuate. When the Hierophant shows up in the reverse, what we have is instability. And it feels to me like it's a kind of instability that you are bringing to yourself in the here and now, because everything is kind of rocking. Everything now needs to be interpreted in the light of what you have seen. And so it could be that there are some relationships that are just kind of falling by the wayside this month. I don't think that you're necessarily going to be, you know, going hammer and tongs at someone and, and you know, having huge rows or anything like that. But this sense of how it's affecting your view of what is stable in your life is very, very strong. Now, I don't want you to be afraid of this because I don't think that there's, you know, what we haven't seen is the tower. I actually saw it when I was shuffling the cards and I did wonder if it was going to come out and there's still time for it to come out in the extended. But it feels like a personal destabilization that is necessary in order for you to start putting everything into a place that is more in alignment with the truth as you now understand it, if that makes sense. In some ways, it actually has you questioning the Hierophant, right? So this is what I thought to be stable and secure. This is how I thought the world worked. This is reality. This is what I inherited. This is what I've been passing forwards. But is it true? Have I been naive? Have there been things that have been going on in my subconscious underneath that I am now aware of? And what does this mean in the current, in my current paradigm? Because it feels like it's shifting really quite profoundly, Libra. And it does feel to me to be slightly uncomfortable, but at the same time, this drive for the truth, this drive for things being correct, seems to overshadow anything else that you could possibly experience. And so it's like, well, no, I actually have to get to the truth of this. I have to analyze what this means in the here and now. Like, let's say the Hierophant and, and Sagittarius energy, being Taurus and Sagittarius as it, like very much polar opposed, not quite properly diametrically opposed, but you know, you have fixed earth on one side, rigid, inflexible, unmoving. This is what your reality is. This is what your situation is everything else happens within that box, right? That's very Taurian. These are the edges of my universe and I know exactly how everything works in here. But Sagittarius is very much about pushing at the edges of that. It's, you know, in some ways it's a little bit rebellious, but it's also got that sense that there is more here than what we have been led to believe. And this Sagittarian energy seems to be playing on the Taurian energy going, well, actually it's not what you thought it was. Now it's time to change, now it's time to evolve, and, and now it's time to be paying attention to what is actually going on right now. You know, perhaps if you have a, a long shared history with someone, it's a realisation that what you have in common is simply that history and nothing else that is really of any kind of value. And that can be quite a difficult thing to come to terms with. But I feel on some level there's been something of you that's been compromised all this time. And you're now seeing it for what it is. What do we have underneath there? We have the Ace of Wands. So we've got the possibility of, of a, an entirely new way of living coming in for you. What do we have underneath there? Three of Pentacles. And possibly 
<sighs> working out who who you want to be around moving forwards whether this is spouses whether this is friends whether it's family whether it's work colleagues you know there's a big shaking up that's happening here libra and it feels like it, it can't help but happen because you can't ignore this information anymore you know now i'm going to go over to vimeo and we're going to look at july specifically i want to explore much more of this so if this leading reading has resonated with you and you would like to also try and pull this apart a little bit and see what's going on do feel free to come join me over at vimeo um or circle you can do either but if that doesn't appeal which is fine just know that that where things feel like they're a little less stable than they should be this is the energy to lean into because there are so many insights that are possible for you to achieve this month to that that it does feel like you might well be restructuring everything and that includes what you want from the rest of your existence you know I feel like this fool is getting ready to turn himself the right way up but he's not there yet right the new start isn't quite here yet what we've got is some sifting to do and some truth to arrive at and you've got to get to a place where you're comfortable with it before he can do his thing but for now he's just kind of waving at you it's saying you've been a bit innocent you've been a little bit naive but that's okay and moving forwards once we know who we are on a deeper level, we can start pushing forwards towards that new start. Mm. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. been talking for long enough. Know that I love you all very, very much. And I'll see you soon.